Hola amigos, welcome to the Best of Mazatlan show. My name is Mark Lickman and I'm the host and publisher of bestofmazatlan.com, the leading digital lifestyle brand of Mazatlan, Mexico. I'm going to use this show to feature entrepreneurs, local business leaders, nonprofits, musicians, and other positive stories that showcase the best of Mazatlan, Mexico. Go to bestofmazatlan.com and sign up to stay current and connected to the best places to eat, drink, live, and play in Mazatlan, Mexico, a.k.a. the Pearl of Pacific, a.k.a. the Colonial City on the Beach. It's so great to be with everyone today. We have a phenomenal guest known as the musical mayor of Mazatlan, the one and only Rob LaMonica. And sitting in with Rob, as he often does, is Ignacio Nacho Chavez, an amazing guitarist who studied with Frank Cambali of the Chick Corea Electric Band. Rob and Nacho make up two-thirds of the house band Rio, along with drummer Omar Rios. Their band backs up the great guest artists that Rob brings to Mazatlan from all over to the world. Welcome to the Best of Mazatlan show, Rob and Nacho. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having us, Mark. Really appreciate it. For those of you watching, please leave a comment, like, or share the show wherever you're watching this. Rob, I'd like to start off the show by having you talk about you, Rob the person, and also tell us how you ended up in Mazatlan. Okay, it's kind of a cool story that I like to tell. In uh, 2002 or so, I had moved back to San Diego. I was selling real estate and uh, wasn't playing very much music. Um, and uh, my sister took me to a, a, on a vacation to Cabo San Lucas. I sat on the beach and uh, at a resort that pretty much had nobody there, and I ate shrimp tacos and had a lot of margaritas and I sat on the beach and uh, I'm an English major and uh, one of my favorite quotes and author Ernest Hemingway one of, my, one of my favorite quotes by him is that the Pacific Ocean holds no memories and so I sat and I stared at the ocean and I thought literally my and figuratively my entire life was behind me and I could look to the future and I said I like this Mexico thing I'm moving and six months later I showed up with six suitcases a piano and a dog and I've not left that was uh, 2003, so I'm starting my 17th year. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite expressions of yours is 88 keys opens up a lot of doors. And I like that expression for a couple reasons. One, because I'll always remember how many keys there are in a piano. But two, <laughs> just, <laughs> but two just because, uh, you know, I'm curious. What doors did they open for you in Mazatlan? What was the first gig you played in Mazatlan? I, um, before I came down, I didn't know, I had never been here before, and I didn't know anybody. Um, I only knew of the city more or less because I missed a wedding that a friend of mine had had a few years back, and they came back saying how wonderful Mazatlan was. I was sick, I couldn't come down for that. And so I, when I started looking into the city, there was a website called um, What's Up Maz or something, um, and I said, well, I'm a keyboard player and I'm, I'm looking to come down and uh, what, what can I pay for rent? What can I do? And a woman who actually lived just one block here off of Plaza Machado answered me and said, well, come on down. You can take care of my house for the first couple of months. You're here rent free. All you got to do is feed the cat that they've made. And uh, the cat, which I ended up keeping for 10 years. And, um, and, uh, um, and she connected me. She was friends with people here, including Alfredo, here at Patreon Lola's. And she was already passing out my CDs and whatnot before I even got here. I also reached out to uh, the other piano player that was here in town, it was Phil Neville, who owned Canucks at the time. And, uh, and he and I still played together, a career together. We've been playing together for a very long time. But his place was very instrumental too when I first got here. And my, my first gig though was at the Jazz Bar here in Plaza Machado, which is now I think it's a hotel over here, kind of an Italian restaurant downstairs. And um, and my second gig was here at Pedro Lola's, my first week here. You know, there wasn't much of a music scene in Mazatlan as recent as the early 2000s. And so what made you decide to put your roots down here? And did you ever think you'd be at the forefront and catalyst for creating, you know, one of the best live music scenes in all of Mexico? Yeah. That's very kind. But, uh, no, not, not so much. I didn't. I just, I just love to play. I just love like playing music. <laughs> I love sharing it and playing it with other people. When I was coming up, 
I was turned down by a lot of people. I, I won an award a few years back, and after the award, I, I was in Arizona at a place that my parents took me to as a kid, and the country band was playing, and, and they said, uh, I went up and asked them if I could sit in and play with them. They had a piano, piano on stage, and the answer was, was no, uh, you know, we're afraid if you fall, you know, the union is gonna, blah, 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 all this, every excuse that you can get, you know, because people don't trust, um, you know. And so I've changed my philosophy, and our stage is almost always open. Even if someone just wants to come up and sing one song or something, if they state whatever, if they're great, whatever, and uh, it doesn't matter, it's the sharing of music. So that was my philosophy coming here. And of course, couldn't do it alone, we had to meet other people, had to meet other players. Um, and I should probably introduce Big Maxio here. And he and I have met uh, my first year here, more or less. Uh, and we've been playing together for 15 years or some crazy thing, a long, long time. Um, and so, and the more people you play with, the more people you meet, the more other people you get to play with. I had mentioned earlier Canucks. Um, uh, Phil used to bring down acts. He would fly acts in from Canada specifically, but really from everywhere. And uh, we would be the backup band for those acts. So every week we were learning new things. So all I'm doing now is in a way, I'm kind of carrying his torch and continuing what his vision was about um, making Mazda on the city, not just what's happened, what happens here culturally, but also um, that you know, we're a big part of the city too. And there's a lot to offer people that are living here that can see things that aren't here all the time, but can see them for a week at a time and enjoy it. So that's kind of the goal of the mission. You know? Well, I know our amigo Alfredo uh, Gomez Rubio, owner of Pedro and Lola's, of course, calls you the Bill Graham of Mazatlan, which is a, a high compliment. You know how I call him now? He's been a good promoter. I get, I tell him, Bill Graham, remember Bill Graham, the one that did all the concerts, Phil Maurice, Phil Moore West, and I told him, hey Rob, you're my, or Bill Graham here, and he loves it. He's in Canada promoting right now. I mean, in the summer, he's, I mean, he's just great. Besides being a great musician, a great promoter, which is not easy. Um, which is a, a high compliment because, you know, Graham was a promoter who had a profound influence on the music scene in the 60s and in San Francisco, and his Fillmore was like a proving ground for Janis Joplin and Jefferson Airplane. And I know Alfredo played a huge role uh, in working together with you uh, to build the music scene and, and help to create what you've referred to as the the happiest place on the planet, uh, on the corner of Pedro and Lola's. Tell us how you two met and, and helped build the scene together. Well, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, one of the uh, people that I was in contact with that helped me with my first accommodations here, she was friends uh, of some of the old local crowd here, including Alfredo. And so I actually had my first meal here at Pedro and Lola's under the sign, and then, well, we still a waiter here. Uh, with my with my waiter back then, and uh, yeah, it's one of the things I love about the city. And um, and and uh, um, he accepted us to have to play here even before I arrived. So my first show here was my second day here, or something like that. Um, and it was right after Jock had played. He was playing inside with his saxophone more. And um, so that's how I met Alfredo, and he's an old rock and roll fan. Specifically, he loves the Stones, but he's an old rock and roll fan. If you're in the restaurant, you'll hear in everything from Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, to Pink Floyd, Jeff Beck, and all the old, good, good old rock and roll. He's, into, he's a music lover, not just rock and roll, but jazz. He introduced me to Keith Jarrett and, and, uh, and some other piano players, Bill Evans, who I never heard of before. And, and, um, uh, so, uh, musically, we had a lot in common, and we were coming in kind of fresh and new, and the scene was still new, and there wasn't tons of bands and players around here at the time, and so it was an opportunity for, for all of us to create something kind of cool here, and which I think we did, and uh, he's, you say he's been influential, he's been, not just for us, he's always opened his doors to music. Um, this is where we started our jazz jam years ago. Um, uh, I was talking about the signatures here on the wall with uh, some of the players, two signatures from the guys from CCR. <laughs> Our friend George Rankin, who's passed uh, from Oregon, and of course Jock, the sax player. And uh, 
And even still, uh, Day Drone Mobiles has music almost seven nights a week, six nights a week or something like that. Um, just recently, I, I have a friend in town from England and I said, you know, can you, uh, can you uh, give her a gig? And so next thing you know, uh, <laughs> you know, she, he's very open to that and he's always been open to my ideas and my little projects. So um, uh, it's just been a long growing relationship. He's always been huge support. And uh, yeah, I don't know how I could have done it really without him because we, I always know that if anything else fails, that he's got our back musically, you know? So, yeah. to be called Bill Graham is, is quite <laughs> I'm not quite sure about that, but we'll see. Well, time will tell. Yeah, just, just take it, Rob, just take it. Time will tell. <laughs> now, now, I've seen you play jazz, blues, Latino music, and your improv chops are, are flawless and, and fluid. But I have to say, I was surprised to see in your bio that you won the Country Music Association's Instrumentalist of the Year Award. You do it all, amigo, and you, and you do it really well. Do you have a, a favorite genre? No, I'm really proud of that. I, I won that award in 2002, uh, Instrumentalist of the Year for the Country Music Association. And uh, uh, I did it playing a Hammond organ and a talk box on the, on the keyboard, which is pretty cool because their the, the association motto is keep country country. And I think I had twisted the lines a little bit. I was very honored to win that award. That was a great trip. And m not many people know about it. However, we do play now uh, in the Troubadours band with Dave Oki from Rivers, Manitoba, and, uh, and Omar Rios and Nacho, the four of us. And um, it's all, it's a lot of it's country music or, or it's rock and roll but with an edge of country on it. So. Uh, you ask about which genres I enjoy playing. I just like playing uh, as long as it's good, as long as it's fun, as long as I can kind of understand what's going on. Um, you know, people think I'm a jazz musician. I'm most certainly not. Um, I'm not really a blues guy. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just uh, all the things have been thrown at me or whatever. And I, I play by ear, so I'm not trained. And not, you know, I haven't been. Uh, just don't have one style that I grew up with or anything. I just like certain songs and like certain music and have fun doing it. So I kind of like it all. Uh, I don't think I have a favorite. <laughs> I don't think I have a favorite style. <laughs> well, you know, you've had the great fortune of opening up for artists such as Meryl Saunders, um, the Jerry Garcia Band, Robin Trower, and, and many others. Uh, are there any memorable stories that you can share with us? Um, I was talking about this with, with Nacho just before, uh, because we were looking at the wall here. I think one of the most memorable ones was uh, was um, with uh, with CCR uh, here in Mazatlan. We actually opened for them at the baseball stadium, I think it was 2007 or something, and uh, when they came down the first time, and they played at the old Bonado Stadium. And the reason that story is kind of neat is because uh, Myself and a guitar player who was visiting from California at the time, we were playing right here where we're sitting now. There used to be a stage here in the corner. And um, and Alfredo had put together that first CCR show, more or less. He was the instigator in getting all that to happen. And so the entire band and production crew came in, had a big long table here. There must have been a dozen of them, 15 of them, something like that. And they were inside here in the air conditioning having dinner and listening to me and my friend Jeff play music. And, um, and they came up and signed the wall, and the wall says, what a groove, and only the best. <laughs> and that's the original drummer and uh, bass player from, from CCR, so I thought that was pretty cool. And then uh, when we actually played the concert, I kind of stole Alfredo's all-access badge, so I was able to go backstage and hang out a little bit, and I got, to, I got to spend a little, I got some fun time with the drummer, just the two of us hanging out backstage on the side listening to the other bands play, and, uh, and just commenting and absorbing the scene. It was pretty neat. But um, it's funny because uh, the more you start to play with people and the more you get to know people, you realize that people are just people. And, you know, a lot of us get starstruck. But really, once you pull away all the fame and everything, you know, it's just really nice sitting down and having nice conversations with normal people, you know, who have kind of been there and done that. <laughs> it's, it's pretty neat, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, when you're not playing in Mazatlan in the winter, you're playing all over the world. You're from Seattle, Hawaii, uh, to New York and, and Canada. Uh, talk about some of the artists that you've brought to Mazatlan over the years and the kind of feedback you hear from them after they've spent some time here in Mazatlan. 
uh, doing a gig with you. Most of them want to come back. Uh, <laughs> and um, and because we're because we <laughs> yeah, um, you know I don't think we I don't think we've had any bad experiences with any of the artists who have come down. Uh, you know, we try to we try to pick people who we're agreeable with just to be, begin with, but. Um, you know, it's such an easy thing here, you know, uh, when, we, when we do the artists, when they come down, we pay for the flights, we put them up, we, we can, we, we try to make them as comfortable as possible. And, uh, and you know, right now, nobody's certainly getting rich, but they have a great experience. We have a really cool core group of people, and you know Mazatlan well, the people here are amazing. There's something about this place, and, and the more that there are good people around, the more it attracts other good people, and that just grows. And it happens the same way with the musicians. And they end up becoming parts of the community. I mentioned uh, the lady from England that we just had down a couple weeks ago is now coming down for extended periods, staying for weeks at a time. Uh, same with the blues guitar player that we, we have coming down. And uh, the Santana and Maz group that was just here last week, two of their members have year-long leases on apartments down here. So they can come down and spend their time here. So I, I'm pretty sure that they're having a good time and enjoying it when they come. And uh, I also have to say that uh, the, the, the band uh, Ignacio and Omar and Howard Anderson, who is here, the saxophone player, um, it's a really good group. And uh, there's not too much ego flying around. We just like to have a good time. And I think that the people that come in and play with, on top of us and with us, are uh, they recognize that. And it, it makes everything easier and more fun and, uh, and makes you want to do it again and again, you know. My goal, to be honest with you, is all the things that I'm doing down here, I'd like to bring them everywhere I go. Um, you know, last summer we, we toured twice up in, uh, in Canada. We went up uh, twice. The first time we went up with Darlene Jones from Cabo San Lucas, originally from New York City. Nice. And, and, uh, and the second time we brought Johnny O from Colorado. Both acts that we book here on, during the regular seasons. So, um, so we're trying to make these little marriages happen. And then interestingly, people like Johnny, have gone up to Alberta and played with people that he's met down here and they have other gigs and new experiences that they get to grow on all from this little hub that we call Muslim right? and it's cool very special awesome, man. well you're, you're a tremendous yeah. ambassador for Mazatlan and Mazatlan is lucky to have you out in all these cities spreading the gospel about music in Mazatlan so much appreciated amigo you're doing a great job and I, and you know I know you're stoked about the great guest artists that you have coming up this season in Mazatlan. So please share with the audience uh, the exciting lineup of artists you have coming up. Yeah, okay, I'm kind of beaming about this. We, we all, anybody's familiar with any of these names who wants to pop on YouTube or whatever. Uh, I encourage you to do so. So I have a, a, a friend who came down last year, I met him last year, and he was coming to shows and he was impressed with the music scene and what we were doing. And um, he lives in Los Angeles. And uh, when I went back up to San Diego, uh, that's where my mother was from, and where I had been bouncing and out of in the summertime. Uh, uh, he said, come up to LA and uh, you know, I'll take you to a show and then maybe introduce you to some people who would like to come down. And this sprung off of the fact that 20-some years ago, I opened in Chico, California with my band for Joe Lewis Walker. And I happened to mention that to him. And he said, oh, Joe Lewis Walker. And then when I went over to the table on the next step break, he had Joe on the telephone. Hey, Rob, how you doing? I remember your band from 20 years ago. We were at the Brickworks in Chico, California. It was nuts. And so uh, we, I, toyed around, I toyed around with the idea, boy, it'd be great if we could get Joe down, which we're still trying to do, by the way. And, um, but, uh, I've met all these other acts, and he knows all, all these players. When they come, come through LA and play, they stay with him, good friends of his. And so I've been introduced to all these people. And so we started booking the calendar. And some of these guys are up there. We have two current Grammy nominees coming down. Um, I'll give you the list. So starting in January for New Year's Eve is uh, Eugene Hideaway Bridges, New Orleans Blues fame. Uh, after that is James Armstrong. After that, we have R.J. Mitchell, one of the best harmonica players in the world. 
After that, I have Mitch Woods, currently nominated for a Grammy. He's a Luke Luke in New Orleans piano player, so I'm looking for it. Chopping up with him, that's going to be fun. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's see what else we got going on. Oh, okay. Uh, then we have into Carnival. So after Carnival is Guy King and Sarah Marie Young. Guy King is considered the king of the blues. Um, he did he did the Buddy Guy tribute show. He was the head, head, head actor for Buddy Guy's tribute show. I was a guest on and sit in. But they're, you know, pretty big names. Too. His wife is a um, is an award winning jazz vocalist. Um, so they're coming together. So we'll do two shows double shows with them, it's going to be fun. And uh, at the end of March I have uh, Jason Ritchie, also a Grammy nominee and considered the best harmonica player technically in the world. So I'm really excited to have him. But, oh, I didn't mention first week of February of Danny B, who is also a Hall of Fame blues harmonica player. Um, I think that's everybody so far. Um, yeah, more or less. But those are pretty big names. Yeah, no, that's a great lineup, Rob. Fantastic. Good for you. On the House of Blues the calendar, the House of Blues would probably be happy with that lineup. So <laughs> yeah, pretty we're bringing, much. Them, we're bringing them here, you know. Yeah. And they're going to be intimate shows as we play. are not super packed, you know. They're not great. So you also get a chance to meet the artists and then experience something that you don't get from a stadium or a concert or something like that. And, uh, yeah. yeah, we're very excited about this year. Very excited. Very excited. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a great lineup, and, and you're right, it's a rare treat to be able to interact with the musicians and, and talk to them. So I hope everybody yeah. that's watching comes out and supports live music in Mazatlan and supports Rob and, and, also and, and gets out there and sees everybody. Yeah, there's, there's one name I didn't mention in all of that, but he's actually going to be spending the entire season with us. And this is actually maybe the biggest news there is. Uh, Rick Reed is a bass player who played with Paul Barfield Blues Band. And, uh, and he's currently playing with Tim Heath, who is just off of tour because their guitar player is going to be playing bypass, which means that he's free and available and has agreed to come down and spend three months with us doing the bass for all of these shows. So we'll have uh, Mr. Rick Reed performing with us uh, all season long as well. That's fantastic. He was very excited about that. Yeah, what a great, what a great lineup, man! Yeah. Now I know why he calls you Bill yeah. Graham of Mazatlan, man. You, you're bringing, you're bringing them all down, man. It's fantastic. <laughs> Lucky for everybody in Mazatlan. Get out there and support Rob. I'm going to be posting all of your shares on bestofmazatlan.com so that you can, you know, promote each week when you have any facts coming. So. Well, you know, this has been fantastic, Rob. I'm finally, I'm glad we were finally able to do this. I'm going to end yeah, the show. Hey, thank you for the interview with, uh, with Alfredo. I appreciate that. You know, I reached out right away, and uh, uh, I love your product. and love what you guys do to promote the city. So thank you so much for having us. Yeah, well, thank you, Rob. And, and before, uh, before we end this, I want to turn it over to you to just say whatever you want to say. Oh, boy. Well, um, there's a lot of people that uh, I don't know and I'd love to know you. Um, uh, thousands of people visit Mazatlan, and uh, we have a beautiful product and a great crowd, but we want and need it to grow, especially if we want to keep bringing uh, larger names uh, down to this city. And so uh, we're asking for everybody's help as far as uh, um, sponsorships, as far as um, accommodations for artists as far as uh, anything you want to be involved with with, uh, with our business and our endeavor with these concert series but then also we just ask that you spread the word tell your friends tell people who are here even who are not um, or people that are visiting help share the posts and, and spread the word because uh, it, uh, there's a really beautiful thing happening here and we need people to be involved or we won't be able to sustain it uh, as we would like to so uh, it's a big opportunity for the city. It's a big opportunity for the people here uh, to see something different. Uh, and it's a big opportunity to expand the culture here as well. So uh, spread the word, I guess, would be the message. I would like to take the opportunity to thank you for uh, having us. But uh, also, I would like to mention that uh, what we have here in Mazatlan with the music to be not possible without the great community that we have. And uh, if you ever uh, come down to one of those shows, you'll witness that very thing that people uh, we play to uh, 
an audience that we uh, call our friends. And it's very organic, it's very uh, mutual, and uh, we are certainly not taking this for granted, uh, but we also want to uh, share this with as many people as we can in this effort to uh, bring uh, bigger names uh, and uh, just make the, the scene grow. It's also uh, kind of a uh, I want to say out of the comfort zone, but uh, uh, it's it's really great. It's a, it's, a, it's an op opportunity for us to uh, uh, meet more people, reach more people, and, and just share this with everybody. And I think Rob is is uh, doing a great job at putting it together. We need all the help. Yeah, thank you for saying that. You know, just as someone who's seen the music scene evolve in Mazatlan over the last 20 years, you know, the music, the live music scene now just brings so much positive energy to Mazatlan. And, you know, whenever I host travel writers, I bring them to, to see you, Rob, and to the live music venues, you know, after dinner, and they all just love it. It's a, it's a great experience. and. Uh, it just brings so much positive energy to Centro and to all of Mazatlan, and it's it's fantastic what you're doing. So I encourage everybody that's seeing the show to support live music in, in Mazatlan. Get out there, meet the musicians, enjoy it, because it's fantastic, and there's some great guest artists coming up this season. Thanks to Rob, you're a fantastic ambassador. <laughs> fantastic ambassador. So this is great. Yeah, bring your instruments, right? You can sit in. You can sit in. Well, I'm going to end the Best of Mazatlan show with this. Um, we all have choices in life. Choose love, not hate. Choose positive, not negative. And always remember, the glass is half full. And if you're lucky, it'll be half full of tequila from La Sasuna. So for now, adios, amigos. We'll see you next show. Rob Nacho, it's been great, man. Thanks. <laughs>